In this video, I'll show you how you can personalize your e-learning courses. So for several months now, I've been exploring the features of the all new Adobe Captivate or Captivate 12, if you will. And, you know, I found some very familiar things uh, that I've used before in e-learning, an example of which is a text entry box or a text input field, as it seems to now be called. And you can use this to capture information from your learners and add a sense of uh, personalizing the e-learning course just for them. Let me show you a couple different ways that you can use this. Okay, so you can personalize an e-learning course in a number of different ways. One way that's very effective is to use your learner's name, just like you would if you were having a conversation with them. At the beginning of such conversation, you would ask them, hey, what's your name? And of course they would tell you. Uh, it doesn't exactly work like that in e-learning, but you can kind of do, do the same thing here. So what I'm going to do with this uh, introductory slide here is I'm gonna add a couple of blocks. In this case, the interactive components uh, for input fields. And actually, I'm going to duplicate that so that we have two of them. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of the labels for these. I don't really need that here. And uh, I'm also just going to work on the spacing a little bit. So if I go into the first block under alignment and spacing, we can just reduce that spacing at the bottom of the block down to, say, 10 pixels. Similarly, we will select this, the last block, the second uh, text input box, and we'll just simply make that 10 pixels there so that they're side by side with one another. In this case, the course I'm building, I'm gonna just use the built-in play bar for this. Now we can customize the text that we see here by default. So I can click on this and just sort of double click on that and type in first name. I'll add a colon so it looks like we're expecting that to be typed in here. And I'll do the same thing for last name. The reason I'm doing this as two separate fields is sometimes I'm just going to want to use the first name by itself, just in a conversational way. Other times I might display their whole name, in which case I'll need their last name as part of that as well. So we've got what we need here. The only thing really is that the variables that Captivate creates for these are kind of generic and they don't really have a lot of meaning. So as you're using them throughout the course, if you have a lot of input fields, it might get confusing as to which ones for first name, which ones for last name. So you can actually uh, create your own user variables. And to do that, we're just gonna go into the window dropdown and select variables here. I'm gonna click on the plus and we're going to call this learner first name. We'll make sure that it's a string variable and we will press create. So that takes care of the first one here. And let's do a similar one called learner last name, also a string variable. And we'll just hit create there. So and clicking anywhere outside of the variables window will close it for you and you can select your first name input field and then select the appropriate variable from this list here. So there's first name, learner first name, and for last name, we'll choose learner last name. Perfect, now we're good to start using the information that our learner types into these fields. So for example, on a slide such as this, you can replace something generic like, you know, just welcome with no you know, no message with it, but you can personalize this by replacing this text with a reference to the variable that you're going to use. So we just want to use the first name here. So if we type in string string, which is the dollar sign symbol, if we do two of those, uh, you'll see a list of all the variables that you could select. So in this case here, we're going to choose learner first name, and that fills out the rest there and of course you probably want to put uh, maybe a colon or a period at the end. You can certainly add extra characters as you need them, of course. The other thing that you can do is you can actually use the first name throughout the course 
any time that you have feedback. So for example, uh, instead of the generic message, you must answer the question before continuing, you could replace that actually with dollar sign, dollar sign, and learner's first name. Uh, just tighten that up there. And we can do the same thing for uh, our feedback when it's incorrect or correct. So I'll replace uh, this with sorry, first name, period. That's incorrect or comma maybe. Uh, and similarly, we can do the same thing with the correct feedback as well. So this is kind of fun. It allows you to make that course a little bit more engaging, I think, if people see their own name used throughout the course there. So that, that can be done quite easily. As you can see, we just edit the feedback captions for this particular uh, slide here. Another thing you can do, of course, is uh, with certain types of widgets, like the certificate widget, you can fill in the first name and the last name. So this is why I would capture both of them. I'll select all this text here, type in the dollar sign, dollar sign, and choose first name, and then do dollar sign, dollar sign, and then last name there. So that will give you the first and last name, obviously with whatever font you're using here. Okay, so let's go back up to the first slide and press the preview button and we can see what this looks like in your browser. You may need to move the play bar around depending on how things are arranged, but that's one of the great features of the new Adobe Captivate is you can place the play bar wherever you like here. So let's start off by entering in uh, first name. I'm not gonna use my own name, I'll say John, and then we'll hit tab, Smith, and we can go ahead and move on to the next slide. Welcome, John. And here's a little summary of what the course is about. So again, it uses that user's name, that learner's name. Uh, when we go here and we choose the correct answer and hit submit, that's correct, John. Click anywhere or press Y to continue. Let's move forward. And now we've come to our certificate of completion and we can see that John Smith has completed the course and he got a score of 10 and today's date. And of course the head of content strategy has signed off on it. <laughs> so that's some really neat little things you can do to personalize your e-learning course using the all new Adobe Captivate. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.